Conan O'Brien tweeted, I'm glad he went to medical school because Mr. Strange lacks oomph. Mark Norman tweeted, reclining your seat on a flight is like getting an abortion. Some people are very against it, but if the option is there, I'm doing it. Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey have a new book. Yeah, it's about The Office. But here's the interesting part. I mean, I'm, it's all interesting. Johnny Mac, why are you hating on the book? Stop being such a jerk. I didn't mean to hate on the book, and I don't feel like making an edit. You know what I was trying to say. Anyway, the thing that I want to point out to you, much better way to phrase it, Johnny Mac, is The Office could have ran two more seasons. Whoa. But they ultimately stopped at season nine because it would have been, quote, sad and wrong. The book is called The Office BFFs, Tales of the Office from Two Best Friends Who Were There. Fisher and Kinsey said that producer Greg Daniels told the cast that NBC offered to give them two more seasons, but there were concerns about how the show would evolve. Some people had already left that last season, notably Mindy Kaling and BJ Novak. Towards the end there, Krasinski's not in a couple episodes, and you had uh, the new breed, fake Dwight and fake Jim. What were the characters' names? I can't even remember. Plop is one of them. Kinsey said the decision was thoughtful and everyone considered how the show would function without its core cast. Fisher said, I mean, the idea of slowly kind of losing people, it just felt like, I don't know, it just felt sad and wrong. Kinsey added, it felt wrong, it felt wrong, and it would just ruin the office world to slowly make up excuses of why people were leaving. One of the things I loved and we all got excited about was being able to know when the end was. Boy, I'm glad they didn't continue that as much as I love that show. I'm just picturing like a season 11 and Jim's not there anymore. And I don't know, we're doing main plots about Oscar and uh, fake Dwight. Yeah, that could have been really bad. The New York Times profiled Michael Che. Lorne Michael says he doesn't see any neediness in Che's coolly confident stage presence for most performers. Lorne Michaels explained, it's all about being loved or wanted, and he doesn't seem terribly interested in that. If he believes in a joke, he's doing it, and he'll acknowledge the audience's response, but you don't get the sense that he's not going to sleep that night. Colin Joe said that working with Che and Weekend Update took a while for us to figure it out individually and together, and that's why it's satisfying now to be out there and get to enjoy it after years where it felt like a struggle. Che's thing was always that he didn't want to tell a joke that someone else could tell. Even a random joke at the end of Update that anybody could technically tell, he finds a way to do it that's unique to him. Che said, I constantly think my career is over after a bad set or a bad update. You always think, this is it. In any moment, I'll be found out. Che also does not expect to give up his habit of using social media to antagonize journalists who have criticized him or he feels have misrepresented him or his friends. Che said, I have not turned over a new leaf. There's a power that I think writers know they have, though they won't admit they have in making perception a reality. I just like to make fun of that. It's like, I see you, you see me. Now, yesterday I mentioned Che was joking about leaving SNL or maybe not leaving SNL. He has played those remarks off as a joke. Who doesn't say they're going to quit their job when they're at their other job? I'm sure Biden says that twice a week. My head's been at leaving for the past five years. He added, I do think I've been here longer than I'll be here. The show's built for younger voices, and at some point, there'll be someone more exciting to watch at the halfway mark of the show than me and dumb Jost. Lorne Michaels, and I think this is the part that really matters, Lorne Michaels said, if I had my way, he'll be here. And I don't always get my way, but when you have someone who's the real thing, you want to hold on as long as you can. I think he'll be back. Hassan Minhaj played Buffalo. Uh, this was prior to the shootings. He made some jokes about the Confederacy. The Confederacy was a bunch of losers. The Confederacy only lasted four years and three months. Jersey Shore lasted six seasons. David Cross spoke to WABE about his upcoming new show, Guru Nation. It's going to be a limited series, as it was intended to be. And Bob Odenkirk, you know, we talked about this format that we really haven't done before, which is telling a story, beginning, middle, and end. It ends. That's it. We're not going to try to extend it for numerous series. It's a story. It's really basically about the cult leaders and gurus and cultural personality type of folks, some a little bit more in evil and duplicitous than others, some not. It's told through the two kind of straight characters. They ping pong across these various cults and these leaders, focusing on the two of them, one played by Bob Odenkirk, one played by myself. And although we also do multiple characters in the story, it'll be more grounded than a typical sketch. We're working on making it feel real and not being overtly judgmental. The question we want to acknowledge is, it doesn't matter what language you speak, whatever you're born in and what gender you are, it doesn't matter. You can get taken in by a con man, whether it's religious-based or science-based or whatever it is, or some amalgamation of all of them. From page six, Pete Davidson fans have taken issue with Kim Kardashian for telling him to remove a hat. This happened when they were shooting behind-the-scenes footage of their time prepping for the 2022 Met Gala. 
In a clip uploaded to the Kardashian social Instagram page, Kim Kardashian is seen telling poor Pete Davidson, take the double hat off. He wore a purple cat over a navy one with white writing. Poor Pete said, I didn't know where to put my hat. Kim gestures to her assistant. She'll hold it just in case, because if it works and we want to use this somewhere, just if I want to post any behind the scenes. Oh, how genuine all this is. Pete Davidson said, oh, you don't want me to have a double hat? I appreciate that. Thank you. Kim, I'm just looking out for you. Pete, no, it's cool. And then he handed over the hat and said, thank you, man. This hat caused a lot of trouble. Fans of Pete Davidson called out Kim. One wrote, she's controlling. She's not letting him be himself by wearing two hats. Let him wear two freaking hats, Kim. It's all about her Instagram aesthetic. Within five months, he's going to be a complete accessory. Another wrote in the comment section, red flag passive aggressive behavior. Instead of telling him she doesn't want him to make her look bad, which is what she's implying. She said she's looking out for him. It's controlling and selfish. Uh-oh. From the Connecticut Post, Kevin Nealon is at Sacred Heart tonight. Why is that interesting, Johnny Mac? That's where Kevin Nealon went to school. It's his third time returning to Sacred Heart. Coming back here anytime is really exciting for me because it brings back so many memories. And just to see how the school has expanded and grown, I really don't recognize it. I'm astounded by the changes. It's almost like a different school. I don't want to date myself, but I remember going to Mixers and sitting in the parking lot by the library listening to Crosby, Stills, and Nash on my 8-track tape player. I played intramural ping pong, which was a lot of fun. I got to the finals and played the champ of the U.S. Boys Club, and he crushed me. I also remember the great basketball games we had. Our team was amazing. One of his favorite classes was a summer three-credit class that included the school's first New England bike trip. I went with Dr. Ralph Corrigan and about eight other people, and we just bicycled through New England. We went up to Mount Holyoke, and it was a really great experience. It was about a 10-day trip. For three credits? I'll do that. Mike Cannon will drop a special on his YouTube channel tonight at 9 Eastern. It is called White Privilege Homeless. The arrival of COVID took the comedian's family out of the city into the house with his in-laws, you know, like the special's title suggests, homeless, and all the experiences that Culture Clash brings. Cannon filmed the special at the Triad Theater in New York City earlier this year. He also talks about the fallacy of coffee consumption and the ambiguity of marijuana legalization in New York. Cannon said, I'm extremely excited for people to watch my new special on YouTube. It's free. It's easy to find. And if you don't like it, you can always switch over to a flat earth documentary. White Privilege Homeless tonight on your YouTube. And that's your comedy news for today. Follow this show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your shows. See you tomorrow.